Years of stalemate during the Bush administration, it was actually, that our warriors and our intelligence agencies began cooperating and coordinating their efforts far more effectively than they had in the early days of the war. Before two New York Times reporters come on the program to recount the untold story of the secret campaign against al-Qaeda, Craig speaks now to Brad Thor, an author who works on the cutting edge between the real and the imagined. Tora Bora was probably one of the greatest losses in modern U.S. military history. Three months after 9-11, we had cornered Osama bin Laden in Tora Bora, and we lost him. And we lost him because we didn't fully commit. Best-selling author Brad Thor, also well-regarded real-life intelligence analyst, says the Bush administration made a clear mistake. If we had nailed Osama bin Laden there, that could have been the end of it. We could have been in and out of Afghanistan. Thor says the CIA and Delta Force asked for 800 Army Rangers to cut off bin Laden's escape routes. Washington said no. They said the Pakistanis will watch the back door. The Pakistanis will make sure they don't get out. And guess what? Pakistanis didn't watch the back door. But was it negligence on the part of the Pakistanis, or were they in bed with al-Qaeda? Pakistan has been an unreliable ally at best. The trail went really cold following the invasion of Iraq in March 2003. And as the insurgency there attacked, things got desperate. And Thor says our intelligence community was overwhelmed. As tough as I can be on the CIA, the CIA was having resources funneled away from them by the Iraq war. After bitter, bloody, and frustrating reversals of fortune in Iraq and Afghanistan, our side finally jump-started our haphazard search for bin Laden. Using skills learned in a decade of fighting, the payoff, the biggest takedown of a fugitive ever. It's because of the CIA's hard work on the ground in Pakistan, picking up this guy's trail, bringing the NSA in to, to listen to all his phone calls, his, his family back in a particular Gulf state, and they really followed this guy. The big break came when the CIA ID'd a key go-between that they felt could lead to bin Laden. And the CIA deserves a lot of credit for, for nailing bin Laden. With focused agents in the field, in an operation called Cannonball, CIA operators finally got the courier's family name, tracked him to a compound just down the street from an unlikely neighbor. What about the fact that he was hiding out in Abbottabad, which is down the block from Pakistan's West Point? Yeah, it's, it's just as insane as where we found Khalid Sheikh Mohammed in 2003, where he's just down the street from the Pakistani army's headquarters. I mean, these guys cannot hide the way they do without help. With their long sought target finally in sight, and with previous disasters in mind, like the failed Delta Force raid in Iran in 1979, and Black Hawk Down in Somalia in 1993, the president gave the green light. It could have been a black eye not only for the administration, but for our nation as a whole. So that took a lot of guts to say we're going to go in and do that. On the moonless night of May 1st, four specially designed choppers carrying 79 commandos, most from Navy SEAL Team 6, descended on the suspect compound. From the get-go, disaster nearly crippled the mission when one of the birds crashed. As the commandos stormed the compound, shots rang out. Of the five dead, one was the mass killer who caused us so much pain. Bloodied, a bullet in his infamous face, history's most expansive, expensive, and exasperating manhunt was over. Osama bin Laden is dead. Happy days. Does the thriller writer in you sometimes think that perhaps Osama bin Laden is still alive and captive? I have no evidence to that, but the thriller writer in me would love to believe that the killing and dumping him in the ocean was just a cover story, and that we've got him at a black site somewhere, and we're peeling that monster's skin off until he gives us every last name, every last uh, operational detail, every plot. There are several movies in the works about the killing of bin Laden. The Hurt Locker's Oscar-winning director Catherine Bigelow has one set to be released next October, and that timing has critics complaining. They say the producers are getting unusual access to military equipment and classified documents for a movie that will make the president look good so close to next November's elections. Harold, that's right. Well, at least the good guys win in the real life uh, story, Craig. Thanks very much. The story of uh, the victory, the uh, takedown of bin Laden and other 